we begin with one of the most elegant and mysterious formulas in all of mathematics, Ramanujan's enigmatic formula. On the left side, we see the square root of pi times e divided by 2, and somehow this equals the sum of two entirely different infinite structures, an infinite series, and a continued fraction. The first part is an infinite series, 1 plus 1 over 1 times 3, plus 1 over 1 times 3 times 5, and so on. The second part is a continued fraction, 1 over 1, plus 1 over 1, plus 2 over 1, plus 3, and it goes on infinitely. Remarkably, this entire expression equals the square root of pi e over 2. But how is this possible? Let's begin by solving the infinite series. We define a generating function, y of x equal to x plus x cubed over 1 times 3, plus x to the fifth over 1 times 3 times 5, and so on. Taking its derivative, we get y prime equals 1 plus 3x squared over 1 times 3 plus 5x to the fourth over 1 times 3 times 5, and so on. This simplifies to y prime equals 1 plus x squared plus x to the fourth over 1 times 3, and so on. Factoring out an x gives us y prime equals 1 plus x times y, a stunningly simple differential equation. We now solve this differential equation. First, we rewrite it as y prime minus x times y equals 1. Ignoring the constant for a moment, we solve the homogeneous part, dy over dx equals x times y. Separating variables, we get 1 over y dy equals x dx. Integrating both sides gives natural log of y equals x squared over 2 plus a constant. Exponentiating, we find y equals e to the c times e to the x squared over 2. But to solve the full equation, we treat the constant as a function of x. So we let y equals c of x times e to the x squared over 2. Substituting this into our differential equation and simplifying, we get c prime of x times e to the x squared over 2 equals 1. Solving for c prime, we find it equals e to the negative x squared over 2. Integrating again gives c of x equals the integral from 0 to x of e to the negative t squared over 2 dt. Therefore, the final generating function is y of x equals e to the x squared over 2 times the integral from 0 to x of e to the negative t squared over 2 dt. Evaluating at x equals 1, we get our original series value, e to the 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative t squared over 2. Now we turn to the Gaussian integral connection. From part 2, we already have the series expressed as e to the 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1. But that's just the beginning. The full Gaussian integral runs from 0 to infinity and equals the square root of pi divided by 2. So we visualize this with a bell curve. The blue area from 0 to 1 represents the infinite series, and the red area from 1 to infinity represents the remainder, which we now suspect is linked to the continued fraction. To prove this connection, we define a new function g of x, whose derivative is g prime equals x times g minus 1. Taking more derivatives reveals a pattern, g double prime equals x times g, g prime plus g, Intrin triple prime equals x g double prime plus 2 times g prime, and so on. Rearranging, we isolate ratios. g equals 1 over x minus g prime over g, and g prime over g equals negative 1 over x minus g double prime over g prime. We substitute this second ratio into the first and continue building a nested fraction. Substituting again, we get g equals 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 2 over x minus the next term, and so on. Continuing the substitution infinitely gives us the final form, g of x equals 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 2 over x plus 3 over x, and so on. This continued fraction matches the red portion of the Gaussian integral. Now we assemble the proof. On one side we have part 1, the infinite series, which equals e to the 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1. On the other, part 2, the continued fraction, which equals e to the 1 half times the integral from 1 to infinity. Adding both expressions gives us e to the 1 half times the full integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t squared over 2. And we know that integral equals the square root of pi over 2. So the full expression becomes e to the 1 half times square root of pi over 2, which simplifies to the square root of pi e over 2. Finally, we conclude the sum of the infinite series and the continued fraction equals the square root of pi e over 2 a profound identity from the mind of Ramanujan. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to support the channel. Click that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell so you never miss an update.